All right, let's continue this discussion. Speaking of energy, in my view, we need a full-blown permitting reform bill, which Mr. Scalise also wants. I kid him about H.R. 1, but we're fighting for it. Joining us now, Rick Perry, who was the former energy secretary and former Texas governor, knows a thing or two about energy. Rick Perry, thank you. Good to see you again. I just want to yeah. read... I, I think you and I have done this before, but it's so much fun. Um, oil and gas, all right, refined products from oil and gas permeate the entire American economy. And the Bidens don't understand that. All these crazy, obsessive left-wing greenies. I just have a, a... There's about 150 on this energy department list, but I'll just read. Clothes, phones, toothpaste, all right, um, trash bags, laptop computers, MRIs, pacemakers, stethoscopes. I mean, the list is virtually endless, and that's from the energy department. So wouldn't it be nice to produce whole hog as much oil and gas as we possibly could to keep the prices down for all these products. And by the way, you know, petrochemicals, I mean, there's no end to it, Rick Perry. So there's a lot, I'm just saying, isn't there a logic in really opening up the spigots and getting an HR1 for permitting and, you know, pipelining and all the rest of it? Yeah, the, the, you make too much sense. That may be the problem, Larry. <laughs> uh, you know, when, when you really think about, I, I'm certain that this administration understands those things. I, I don't think they're idiots, um, but I think they don't care. And, and that should be a greater concern to the American people, is that we have an administration that is so tied to this radical uh, environmental left that they're willing to drive your cost literally through the roof uh, because of their hatred of fossil fuels and this uh, myth that they have attached themselves to that the, uh, the climate somehow is uh, going to go to hell in a handbasket, so to speak, if we... Uh, uh, if we drill one more oil well, which is crazy, it's nonsense. Uh, clean burning American uh, natural gas, which we were on the verge of being able to push out into Europe, into India, into a host of other countries, replacing older inefficient power plants in those countries with clean burning uh, natural gas. I mean, it's just the 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 theory that they work on is flawed from from the get go. But when you th Think about, and you and Steve bring up, who, by the way, just fabulous. Steve Scalise is just, I, I'm, I'm so excited that he's the uh, yep. uh, majority leader now and, and bringing some real common sense, good Louisiana uh, common sense, if you will. But this idea that everything practically that you touch out there, that you buy, that you purchase, that transports, that brings things to us, and then we use them petrochemicals are at the basis of them and they're driving up the cost of all of that i thought that segment where you showed what was happening on the cpi and then the and the hourly wages was a great example of it uh, people who voted for joe biden are paying a price for it mm. and i hope that as they make the decision about was it the right decision they come to uh, the right decision and that is these people in washington dc are completely and totally out of touch with the average American, what they're going through, what it's costing them, and that we have a, a, a real renaissance, if you will, of wisdom in Washington, D.C., and bring some people in that understand economics, understand the physics and the chemistry, and all of those kind of things that actually make a difference in people's lives. You know, Rick, it's just interesting you think about it. So Biden has sold whatever nearly half of the strategic petroleum reserve, whatever they're, 40 percent, whatever the right number is. He sold that. To get gasoline prices down, which was never part of the strategic petroleum legislation going back many years to the 1970s, as you well know. But here's the thing. Oil is still $80 a barrel. It doesn't have to be. If we open the spigots, it would probably be closer to 40. Gasoline is still about $3.50. You know, two years ago, it was about $2. What I'm saying is he's wasted the SPRO. He's going to have to buy it back at very higher prices, which is going to damage the budget again. And they continue these climate fictions uh, is in, in support of a bad idea in the first place. I mean, it didn't do any good. It's, it's like the economy, you know? If all his policies were so good, then how come GDP is growing at 1% for the past year with a 6.5% inflation rate? It didn't work. 
I mean, if socialism was going to work, it would have worked. That's my point. It's not working. Well, it, it may have made a difference in the elections. I don't know that. But, I mean, that was the reason they played politics with the, uh, the SPRO, was they went out there and sold it to try to drive down gasoline prices. But at what cost? And I think that's the real that's issue. That's right. Uh, having been a former governor, when we have a major uh, natural disaster uh, and you don't have the ability to go to that strategic petroleum reserve to keep the uh, energy flowing, it could be devastating. It could cost people their lives, literally. And in the nat national defense side of this, um, I'm really intrigued why some state uh, doesn't sue uh, the federal government, sue the Biden administration over this haphazard and frankly, I think uh, illegal use of the, the strategic petroleum reserve. Right. Worth a conversation for somebody somewhere. You know, that's a great point. That is a terrific. Somebody should read the legislation, the enabling legislation. Right. This is, uh, that's a terrific point, and I'm going to work through that point. You know, one last thing, Rick. Uh, you got, remember, this came from the Arab oil embargo in the 1970s, okay? That was the original uh, trigger for uh, having a strategic petroleum reserve in the first place. National security. Okay. You got, the Ar you got the Saudis talking to the Chinese, right, about using the Chinese yuan currency rather than the dollar. Now, that is one consequence why we should be thinking about a strategic petroleum reserve. Now they're going to sell dollars to buy. I don't know if they can do it. The yuan is not even convertible. But there are conversations going on. They want to dump dollars, and they want to use the Chinese currency. And Saudi Arabia is now, I think, uh, China's second largest supplier, uh, maybe the first, I think second after Russia. So we should be wary of these international global events. Well, we should be wary of uh, going after countries that should be our friends. Mm. Uh, and in that region, obviously, the Saudis should be our friend. And this administration, and frankly, has treated them like, uh, uh, like hell. Yeah. And, and so there's only so much uh, that, that Saudi's going to take uh, from an American president who uh, berates them in public the way that uh, Joe Biden did. And we should expect them. I mean, if, if you treat a, a friend that way, pretty soon they're not going to be your friend. Mm. Uh, this is just politics 101 that Joe Biden is flunking. All right. Rick Perry, thank you for your wisdom, as always, sir.